What's good everybody? My name is Paul the Fifth, Fifth and if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I want to give you some background about myself. I'm an up and coming music producer here in Nashville, Tennessee. I've got an education from the recording workshop in Chillicothe, Ohio. Also graduated at the top of my class from SAE Institute, Nashville in 2017. I started the studio in late 2019. I started this channel late last year showing you the order process, the setup, installation, and all the processes of getting everything you see here put together. My goal with this channel is to show you, the viewer, everything music related. I want to show you everything from music production, recording, engineering, mixing, and mastering, showing you how to make podcasts, creating content, media, everything audio and media related I want to show to you. If you've been following me for some time, I thank you for the subs and all the support up until this point. Do you know what today is? It's Wednesday, March the 10th. Do you know the significance of that? Well, let me tell you. Exactly four months ago today, Apple made the announcement for their M1 series of silicon chips. I wanted to take some time and share with you my experiences of these two devices, the M1 Mac Mini, as well as my M1 MacBook Pro, both devices customized and spec'd out at 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of internal storage. Today's video is all about my experience with these two devices since the announcement of the release and the time that I've had them. Going over my likes, dislikes, the pros and cons, and some of the things I think Apple could have done a little bit better before releasing this series. Before I jump into today's content and for you to fully understand why I made the purchase and I needed these two devices, let's take a trip back into time. Let's go back into June of 2020. I was using my 13 inch MacBook Pro that's over here that I got when I was a student at SAE Institute Nashville. The device itself had an i5 processor, only eight gigs of RAM, with a total storage amount of 250 gigs. With specs like that, you can probably imagine that as a music producer, trying to bounce and render files and throw a lot of heavy sessions for that computer to do, it couldn't handle it. It was dying a slow and digital death. I was trying to run Pro Tools and Logic sessions with high track counts, some almost in the hundreds, I was trying to render iMovie videos that were 17 and 18 minutes long that were 20 gigs of total storage and it just couldn't handle things. It was constantly crashing, constantly getting hot, overheating and shutting down. You may have seen some of my previous render test videos from that versus the M1 laptop versus the M1 Mac Mini. If you missed any of those render test videos, I will have the links for them in the description. The other device that I had here in the studio was a late 2015 27 inch iMac. This has some better specs. It has 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of storage, and an i7 processor. So it ran a little bit better, but was still kind of lagging and still having some issues rendering and processing files. So a friend of mine, his name is Kevin Leach. He goes by the name of Sonic Pilot. He highly influenced me on my decision to purchase the Mac Mini. He's got a Mac Mini and TV as his monitor. I've adopted his setup strategy and created this to be my own. As with anything in life, I always try to be positive and start with a good mental attitude. So I'd like to share with you now my positive experiences, the good things, and my pros of this new M1 Mac Mini. As you can see, the device is small, and portable. Put it in my backpack, take it home, work on projects, bring it back here, and have a smooth transition. I love that. Another thing I really like here is your port selection. You got your power, ethernet, two USB-C ports, and HDMI 2. I use that to hook up my TV for my monitor. Two USB ports, and underneath that, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Overall, pretty decent port selection. If you're like me and may need some more ports, 
let me tell you about this device. I did some research last year and came across this product. This is the Satechi USB-C Hub. I actually purchased this before I bought the Mac Mini. The purpose of this device is to add ports to the computer here. The port selection here includes something I'm really appreciative of, a slot for an SD reader and your SD adapter, another headphone port, three additional USB ports here, and finally another USB-C port. Installation is easy. Take your Mac Mini, put it on top, Take your USB-C port, plug it in, you're good to go. Voila. Since this is my very first Mac Mini, let me share with you how my experience started. The M1 announcement was made on November 10th. I made the purchase of this device November 11th, got an email confirming and stating that this would be delivered to me on November 29th. For the Thanksgiving holiday, I went back home to Southern Indiana to visit my family. And the Friday after Thanksgiving, I get an email and text alert letting me know that, hey, your Mac mini has been delivered. I was like, what? <laughs> I had made plans to stay for dinner. And I left at 7.09, got back to Nashville at 9.39. Thankfully, my package was at my doorstep unharmed. Let me continue on with my pros list. You may have seen some of my render tests on the Mac mini. And if you haven't, I will have the link for those in the description. The M1 silicon chips are known for their speed, efficiency, and quietness. I can confirm all three of these things are true. I was rendering an 18 minute video in iMovie and the file size was approximately 20 gigs. It rendered that video in approximately five minutes. What? Yes, it did it fast, quietly, efficiently, and you didn't even know it was running. No struggles at all. Native programs work flawlessly, including iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Logic. All those have been a great experience. Let's talk about Rosetta for a moment. Rosetta is the liaison between your M1 Mac and any non-native program. So if there's something that is not unique to Apple, when you first set up the device, it will ask you to install Rosetta. You type in your password, once done, it reads everything. And what it'll do is it'll convert and make everything that's non-native, not an Apple product or program, and it'll run everything in the background and convert and make everything run smoothly and flawlessly, and you won't even know that it's there. I really enjoy that. So we've got a number of pros here from port selection, being quiet, fast, efficient, and just overall running smoothly. There are, however, some negatives. Let me share with you now the cons I've experienced. As you can see, the Mac Mini is just the Mac Mini and it comes with your power. Now, if you already have prior accessories, you should be good to go. Just plug them in and you're set. I got rid of a lot of the accessories I had with the previous iMac. I invested in this Apple branded Bluetooth wireless keyboard. It also has a port where my thumb is for a cable to connect to the Mac Mini. I've also tried using my Apple Mouse 2 to use via Bluetooth. There's been some connectivity issues. Definitely one of the cons there. I am constantly losing the Bluetooth connection from this to the Mac Mini. I'm finding that I have to keep things hardwired most of the time. I'm okay with that. One con on the Satechi. Even though you have multiple ports here, if you're trying to plug something in with a USB cable, you will definitely have a good, solid, reliable connection as far as data transfer, but these do not charge. Just keep that in mind if you're looking for more ports and a USB-C hub. And another weird issue I wanted to share with you, this is a Thunderbolt to USB-C adapter. I am not able to get any of my Thunderbolt products to work with this adapter. This came in a two pack and I thought, well, maybe this is a malfunction and defective. Well, the other one did not work either. So I can't get any of my Thunderbolt products to work on here. So what was the solution? I ended up getting an interface that was USB-C compatible. Expensive fix, but I got it to work. On the subject of connectivity, 
I am in a commercial facility that's 50,000 square feet. We have five huge rehearsal halls here and 60 individual rooms around the building. Well, at any given point in time during the day, you could have 60 or more people connected to the internet at one time. This Mac Mini does not stay connected for me whatsoever. We have approximately five to seven different internet connections here. This is constantly dropping them all. I have to go into system preferences and manually enter that information. I do find that on the phone I'm filming myself on, my iPhone 12 Max Pro, my iPad, my two computers over here, they all seem to be connected just fine. Upon research, the connectivity issues are quite the common issue from Apple. I can handle going hardwired. I'm fine with that, but losing internet connection is no bueno. Major fail on Apple's part. I have yet to contact them, so maybe there's some troubleshooting I can do to improve that situation. Another major con. You can only customize these at the time of order. Only able to spec this out at 16 gigs of RAM, and that's okay because you have eight cores in here, so everything does run incredibly fast. Only customizable to two terabytes on your internal memory. But that's okay because with your ports and the USB-C hub, I've got a four terabyte external hard drive back there, so I'm good there on storage. And my number one fail of Apple on this device is Big Sur. I call it Big Flop. I knew going into unprecedented series of chips and operating system, there'd be issues and bugs to work out. And guess what? I'm working out those bugs and series of issues. Being a music producer, it's known that with any new software update, you don't want to update to it. This came preloaded with Big Sur, was unable to get a backup of Catalina on here. Multiple attempts with Apple support just didn't work. What's that mean? For me, I've invested in hundreds of dollars worth of third party plugins that are not compatible with Big Sur yet. I believe I have two or three plug-in packs that are working. They're still all on my old 13-inch MacBook Pro that can't handle them, so it's a double-edged sword. I'm able to render things quickly and efficiently and quietly, but I can't use a lot of my plugins. I'm using native plugins, which are okay. They get the job done, so I'm not totally out of the fire yet. That was my pros and cons of my M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. A few things I wish Apple would have done before launching this M1 series. Definitely researching, coming up with a better Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. That experience has been horrible. The Wi-Fi dropping here constantly makes me want to pull all of this beautiful hair out. And <laughs> it's just been a thorn in my side. So I'm trying to work through that. The compatibility issue still four months later with all the plugins is still a headache. I'm getting through that. Overall, I am glad that I made the purchase of this here. Have you got yourself an M1 Mac Mini? What's your experience been like? What's your pros and cons list like? If you would, let me know those in the comments. Let's go ahead and talk about the MacBook Pro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just went over my experience with the M1 Mac Mini with the 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. I want to share the experience I've had with my MacBook Pro. Similar experience on the order. Ordered this November 29th. The email stated it would be delivered to me on December 31st. As time went on, I got updates, and this was actually delivered to me December 21st, which is really cool because I got to take it home for Christmas time, and that was like my Christmas gift to myself. It's my birthday present to myself. When I got this, and after it was unboxed, if you haven't seen the unboxing of this, We'll have the link for that in the description. So when I try to back this up, I try to set it up from a backup of my 27 inch iMac, which had Catalina on it. It showed everything was transferred to this successfully. However, it was only showing Big Sur. I contacted Apple support. They weren't super helpful in getting Catalina on here. I tried to erase things and start over. The way to do that 
turn the computer off, you hit Command R to put it in recovery mode. This was stuck in recovery mode for two or three weeks. Finally, in early January, after about five or six calls to Apple, I got someone to finally realize it was a hardware issue. So that in itself was an ordeal. But once I got the repair started, I sent it off on a Saturday and I got it the next Tuesday. Thankfully, it only went to Memphis, not too far from Nashville, and I got it in about four days. So that was pretty awesome. As stated before, on the Mac Mini, let's start with my pros. Here they are. Very similar set of pros to the Mac Mini. It's fast, it's efficient, it's quiet, it renders things efficiently. It has exceeded my expectations and blown my mind as well. If you haven't seen those videos yet, make sure to check them out in my M1 series playlist. And again, all the native programs seem to work smoothly and efficiently. Not much that I've put on here as far as other software. I'm using Final Cut, Logic, iMovie. I've got Pro Tools, no issues with that. I am still having some issues with my plugins. That's some of my cons, talking about that shortly. One unique difference right here on your power button, you can also use your fingerprint to unlock the computer or make purchases. That's pretty dope. I like that a lot. A couple unique differences right here. You've got the touchpad. That's a little bit of both for me. I will name a few pros that I like. I like the pros for the brightness. That's very cool on there. You can turn everything off with one click of a button. You can push the mute, that turns all your volume off. I dig that a lot. I've got some other cons with that I'll talk about shortly. One thing I like that's a lot better on here compared to the M1 Mac Mini is the connectivity. I don't really have many Bluetooth devices connected, but the internet connectivity is solid. The internet speed is so fast. When I go into my YouTube studio and look for music within those playlists there, it downloads them like that. It's amazing. The other thing that I'm really super digging is AirDrop. The AirDrop experience is next to none. It's so quick, it is so fast, so little time, and I just love it. It's the best experience ever from getting information from my other devices over here. So yes, this has a lot of pros. Here are some of the cons. Wasn't used to this with my old MacBook. Only two USB-C ports. What's that mean? Investments in more hardware. This is one of three USB-C hubs that I purchased between this and my Mac Mini. The other weird little quirk that I'm not digging, traditionally, Apple has had your headphone jack on the left-hand side, which generally coincides with most standard headphones. Your headphone cable being on the left ear side of the headphones. Making that change over here Hasn't been that big of an issue, just been something I've been trying to adjust to. Another con I mentioned on the touchpad here, I don't like the entire volume control being touchpad. Maybe I'm just old school. On every prior Mac I've ever had, you can just push the button up or down. You have to do it on here. It's a little different. I know we're in 2021. I need to adjust and adapt. It's just a big difference for me, so I'm working through that. Not a huge deal. The other issue that I've mentioned was getting stuck in recovery mode for about two weeks. We've got that fixed with Apple support, so again, not a huge deal. But now I'll see some of the things that are a huge deal. I haven't experienced this myself. A good friend of mine named Mark here at the studio, he purchased the same exact model. The M1 with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of storage. His issue was the device stopped charging. Apparently that is a big issue with the USB-C charging ports now. And another common issue that I'm finding, that I've researched and that I'm dealing with personally is my storage. It'll tell you that you have a set amount. I upgraded this to one terabyte. At first when I got it, it said I had 600 gigs available went down to 300. Now I'm currently only down to like 120 gigs. Where the hell did half a terabyte go? 
Can you explain that to me, Apple? So yet again, I'm finding the need to invest in another third party program. I'm hoping it'll work called Clean My Mac to help try to find some of that stuff that shouldn't be there. And coinciding with my experience on the Mac Mini, Big Sur, or as I call it, Big Flop, still wasn't able to get Catalina on here. It came pre-programmed. I had the issue with the recovery mode. Still to this day, four months later, I can't get all my third party plugins. It's an ordeal, it's a hassle, and like on this, I'm working through it. But overall, in the last four months since I've had these devices, knowing that this is a brand new chipset, working through those issues, those bugs and situations, am I happy that I made this purchase decision? Oh, heck yeah. And guess what? I'm a loyal Apple customer. I've got my two MacBook Pros. I've got the Mac Mini. I've got my iPad being filmed on an iPhone Pro Max. I've got another iPhone Pro Max. I've got my iWatch that I'm wearing and I've got an Apple TV at home. So when the M1X chipset comes out, am I gonna get one of those? Most likely, I'm gonna check it out for sure. Thank you for watching. If you learned anything, have any comments on some of the things I've been experienced or dealing with, please let me know in the comments if you are an M1 user. What pros, what cons have you experienced as an M1 user? I would like to know. Please leave those in the comments. If you like today's content, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up. While you're there, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that way you know what me, Paul the Fifth, is up to here at Legacy Studios. Thank you for watching. This has been my four months later pros and cons reviews of the Apple M1 Silicon series of chips. Thanks for watching. My name is Paul the Fifth.